What's up, y'all? I'm back out here at the range on another cold, wet day. It's been raining for about the past three days out here, but hopefully it'll hold off and keep us dry long enough to get a few things done. So I got the jelly contraption set up with the chrono and two blocks of gel. Now these blocks are pretty much clear, all except for a couple little straggling little paths that uh, took place on a different test that I had. I didn't really want to melt the whole block again just for these little stragglers. So I think we got plenty of room to see what's going on with this. And as usual lately for these cold weather tests, I am going to be using my heavy clothing barrier, which is one layer of denim, one layer of fleece, and two layers of a cotton t-shirt material. And as you can see, we're testing out some 40 Smith & Wesson here today. What we got is the Remington Golden Saber Bonded Jacketed Hollow Points. Now these are brass jacketed hollow points, and that's basically why they call them Golden Saber, because the golden color. But if you'll see here, I'm assuming they're still brass jacketed because the box says they are, and you can see on the back here. But you can see how nice and golden color that jacket is on this one. This here looks almost just copper jacketed, but if you look inside, it's probably going to be a little fuzzy for you. You got that brass color, so maybe they're just using a, a different quality of brass or a different process or whatever the case may be. Um, I'm assuming they're still brass jacketed anyway, so bonded brass jacketed. Now, these are the 165 grainers. I do also have the 180 grainers, so if y'all looking for that, I'll probably do a test on that after this one or a couple tests after this one so we can get both weights taken care of. Now, we're going to be running these things out of two different barrel lengths for the longer one i've got the glock 22 this has got basically a four and a half inch barrel and then for the shorty we've got the glock 27 with what's basically a three and a half inch barrel so if you've got the glock 23 40 smith and wesson you're right here in the middle of these two but hopefully we'll see some good performance out of these if i remember correctly most all of them that i've tested in the past in different calibers have done well so let's see if these 40 smith and wesson golden sabers are the golden ticket all right y'all let's get us some speeds on these things i'm gonna do a five round average from each barrel length starting with the glock 27 first let's see what these golden sabers are running got 1015 looks like 1050 1028 1012 maybe and 1,025, so not too bad out of a little short barrel. Let's go check these out. All right, so our five round average from the three and a half inch Glock 27 is 1,025 feet per second. So really, I don't think that's too bad for 165 grain projectile out of this little short barrel, but let me reset it and let's check out that Glock 22. All right, let's see what this four and a half inch Glock 22 can do for the speeds. Got 1,074. 1,085, uh, what was that, 1,100, 1,081, and 1,084, so it sped it up a little bit. Let's check that average. All right, so the five round average from our Glock 22 was 1,084 feet per second. And if you remember from that 27, it was 1,025. So you're talking about 59 feet per second faster from the Glock 22. What's that, uh, about 6% of the total there? So mm, I don't know, not a really a whole lot, but should be interesting to see what that does in the gel. Let me get this reset and y'all know what time it is. All right, y'all, it's Willy Wonka jelly time. I'm gonna put one round from each barrel into the gel, starting with the Glock 27 first. Let's see what this little shorty can do with these golden sabers. All right, I believe that was a good hit and stayed in. Let me go down there and check that out. All right, I have to say that right there is looking pretty good already to be out of that short barrel, but let's see what this Glock 22 can do. I put that thing exactly across from that other little stripe, which I didn't want to do, but I'm going to try to put this one a little maybe below and to the right of this first one. All right, I think we did pretty good down there. Let's go check these things out.
All right, y'all, let's check out what we got down here. First thing I'll say is both of these rounds did absolutely fantastic. This looks like almost picture perfect performance right here. So on the top here, that was the first one from the Glock 27. As you can see, comes in, looks like it expands immediately. Very nice wound channel, really, really nice disruption. Carries on through here. Now starting right here, that, that little bit of disruption, that was that little track. I got almost exactly behind it, but uh, there's nothing really to see past this point here it's just like a, a straight line and then you can see the projectile sitting here looks like it poked into that second block maybe a half of an inch and then rebounded and stopped right there in between them so pretty much exactly 16 inches of penetration out of that thing and it looks like it's expanded very nicely and then of course up underneath that's the one out of our glock 22 now it's hard to get across on camera like the differences in the size and what these wound channels and disruptions look like but i can tell you just being here in person there is a noticeable difference in the size of the disruption out of this glock 22 now not that this 27 is bad or, or underwhelming but you can tell that this 22 is a little bit bigger on the disruption but again this one comes in expands looks like almost immediately very nice disruption there carries on through the block definitely both of them carried a lot of cloth i don't see any uh lead or jacket or anything like that but carries on through the block and stops almost exactly the same spot is at 27 it poked into the second block again maybe half of an inch and stopped right there in between them they look nearly identical so the penetration i really didn't even have to measure because i can see it like i say and it's exactly 16 and a half inches of forward momentum from both of these maybe an eighth of an inch more out of that glock 22 but pretty much both of them like 16 and a half inches here's your an overhead view from the opposite side so again down on the bottom that's the glock 22 on the top is the 27 so shorter barrel on the top longer on the bottom so both of them as you can see extremely nice performance out of these things and then both of them are sitting right there and as you can see we'll pull them here but both of them look like they got some very nice expansion all right let's check out these projectiles y'all so this one right here is out of the glock 27 the shorter barrel this one right here is out of the glock 22 with the longer barrel you can't tell a bit of difference between these things i'm telling you right now they look exactly the same size exactly the same expansion you can just look at the base of the bullet how much it's peeled back both of them's got some little fragments of cloth but they, you can just tell they didn't care nothing about that cloth i mean went right through it and still opened up fantastic i mean you're talking about some really really nice expansion on both of these but let's get us a weight measurement on them like i say i don't see any material but this one right here was out of the glock 22 they both started at 165 that one is 164.6 and then the one out of the glock 27 is 165.1 so looks like both of them may have lost well this one may have lost a crumb or two it's really hard to say but i don't see anything at all in the gel from them now, as far as the expansion, I think we're going to have almost exactly the same, but this Glock 27 here, we got 5.52, 5 5.58, and 5.97, so some really nice expansion on that one. And then this one here out of the Glock 22, we got 5.76, 6.18, and 5.92, so maybe a little bit more expansion on that one. It seems like anywhere I measure it, you got a little tiny bit more out of that Glock 22. So there you have it, y'all, the 165 grain Remington Golden Sabre and 40 Smith & Wesson. In my opinion, these are some fantastic rounds. These things, like I said, are, are basically picture-perfect performance there. Fantastic wound channel and disruption, perfect penetration, absolutely fantastic expansion here. I don't think you can ask for much more at all out of a round than this right here. Now, I am still going to test the 180s in these Golden Sabres, but I'm going to tell you right now, just looking at this, they have got their work cut out for them. All right, y'all, I'm going to wrap it up right there for the testing on what I think was another fantastic 40 Smith & Wesson round. Like I mentioned before, these Golden Sabres, as far as I can remember, have done really well in pretty much every caliber I've tested them in, and this just continued to streak right here. These 40 Smith & Wesson, like I already said, in my opinion, I think they did absolutely perfect as far as the disruption with the wound channel, the penetration, the expansion, got plenty of power. I don't think you can ask for anything else out of these rounds. But y'all, let me 
know what y'all think about these rounds. Does some of y'all out there carry these? Do you carry the 180 version instead, which I am still going to test. So y'all let me know down below. What do you think about these? And what do you think the 180s are going to do compared to what you saw out of these? If you did enjoy this video, take a second to hit that thumbs up button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that bell notification icon so you can hopefully get notified when I upload new stuff. Take a second if you would and check out my affiliate links in the video description. You can save a lot of money on some of those links and anything you buy from them, it really does help the channel. Like I always tell you, I appreciate all my Range Gang members and every single one of y'all out there for supporting this channel by watching these videos, hitting that thumbs up, subscribing to the channel, and again, leave me some comments down below. Let me know what you think about these golden sabers. Hopefully it'll stay dry on me to get a few more things done out here. I got a lot of good stuff coming y'all's way, so be on the lookout for that. And in the meantime, stay safe, stay prepared, and I'll see you soon.